Marco Polo. Yes, Marco Polo. Indeed. I keep Hello. thinking every time you say Mark, I keep thinking you're talking about the kid in the hospital. Mm, he's no longer in the hospital. Oh, that's he's true. walking on his own two feet. Yes, he's being brainwashed by the uh, by by Lex Luthor. Isn't it nice um, we have you, we get to beat him up soon? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for the third hour of today's issue of Master New Generation. Yes, that is true. Mark is back on his own two feet. As sadly, gruesomely opposed to the clone of Monica Le Fay. Um, speaking at of least which... She's, she, at least she's no longer in pain. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. I mean, Sparrow did do a fucking number on her. Except, of course, we don't, we don't know what comes after death. And, and you know... Because she was killed by magic, then uh, never yes, mind. Who knows? Can, can of worms. Interesting conversation. Kettle, kettle of fish. Can of worms. So, um, we 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 flip the page uh, from the the horrified revelation, and we are uh, we have remained with White Sparrow in this room. Uh, alternatively, we could be with White Sparrow heading out of the room. It's largely up to you. But what do you do? The, the the horrifying tableau on display is in front of you. What's your reaction? You know, you mean aside from being absolutely horrified? Yes, aside from that. Well, I think after being stunned uh, for a while, she'll move ever so slowly closer to the, I assume, corpse. Yes. And then, Ashes. you know... You put... become aware of like little police tags on the ground you know like little um uh little signs with with number markings on them denoting the placement of evidence um yeah just just to be completely sure she'll reach out and try to see if she can sense a mind of any kind mm, you can't it's uh, the gym i of that She all gone. I think she'll go find the others. You know, turn back into a um, something, and then find the others. All right. So the there is there is the moment of approaching the bed, then thinking better of it, and then we we cut to the outside, uh, but like a couple of like uh, benches where people can sit and you know wait. Um, as um, Sparrow emerges from like the theme, the ladies' toilet or something. I think they were actually walking back upstairs because it would look really conspicuous if they just stayed down there. Hmm. Yeah. So they're probably sitting in the waiting room on her mother's, um, what's it called? Uh, there's usually a waiting room on every floor. Yeah. Stuff like you, that. Basically like in a, in a like resting space uh, yeah. when, when Sparrow uh, returns to you. Yes. And she, you know, the the she does a mid-air transformation so that she lands as a human, and it's clear from her expression that something horrible has happened. Do we want to ask? I think I'll keep it brief. Money clone is very dead. All right. What happened? I don't know, but it seems like she's been burned to death. Ow. That's, uh... Were there any signs of who did it? Something we can go on? I mean, that's cool. Like, like, was, was it a magic or gunshot or...? I think it was Raven-related. I mean, unless... They were using dragon breath rounds. I seriously doubt that a gunshot would burn her. Well, <laughs> you could go I back know. and have a look, but that is up to you. It's more of a thing that they put something in there and then blow it up. But yeah, Raven that's related. Possibility. Yeah, yeah. They, the scorch marks on the wall formed a kind of raven. That's... Oh. Obviously, all kinds of horrible. 
Frank, we need to find that bitch. Yeah, we really do. But why would you go for money, Clone? Maybe she felt that I had been in contact with her. Well, you have. More than that. No, wait, 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 wait. You, you are actually... No, never mind. I just had a thought, but it doesn't matter. You were doing something when you actually used whatever you did to use Money Clone, weren't you? I was standing right there. You looked fucking scary. Yeah, I'm... Developing new powers, I suppose, is a way of putting it. Um, a way. I, 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 I think since Raven and I were made from the same event, we can kind of draw from the same place. And that means I can draw on darker powers if I need to. All I know is you looked fucking scary when you did it. So, because you used those quote-unquote darker powers, do you think that may have drawn uh, Raven's attention onto this, this clone? I don't know, I'm grasping straws here, guys. I think Sparrow gasps. Oh no. And then she turns into a bird and goes to fly somewhere else. It. Where are you going? My house. Okay. Uh, come, Diamond. I don't know where it is. <laughs> sure. So, uh, are you, are you and rushing then there or are you getting says, there? She by... says, sure. And then a moment later, she's like, oh, fuck. So, um, I, I understand that the bird flying there is going to arrive pretty fast. Um, and we're going to be there first. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, are you, you going to just uh, port there? Yeah, she right. flew ahead, so I'm guessing she doesn't want the lift. I don't think she's thinking all that clearly. No, but we're getting there first, at least. <laughs> all right, so we, we arrive at, uh, like, the, the outside of the, uh, the north residence. Uh, everything seems to be in good order out here. So I think, like, we see you poured in on the other side of the street, and an undeterminable amount of time, but not too long later, um, Star uh, White Sparrow arrives as well. Yeah. And there is this like there is this like painting of of the house. It looks lonely. I like the way it's it's being deliberately placed in in the uh, in the uh, panel to have like a lot of space around it. Uh, but the lights are on inside, uh, and everything seems normal. Can we see movement? Uh, yeah, shadows in the windows. I tried to see. Is it me. is it the regular movement, as in walking from room to room, making dinner or something? Yeah. Okay. I tried can to you zoom. see who it is? I tried to zoom to see if I can. Yeah, no. it like you. you get, that, that's what you get, right? Like there is just like yeah normal Some... traffic in the house. A yeah. mom and a dad doing yeah. housey things. Totally. Right. Nothing seems out of the ordinary mm. here. Well, Diamond describes what she's seeing. Mm. Okay, that's. I don't know if that debunks that theory, but... Well... Wait a second. Wait a second. I, I mean, I, I had this idea back at the hospital, but... I, I don't know. It, it just I, I don't know any of this. It's just me, as I said, grasping at straws, all right? But what if it isn't about you? What if it's about the clone? What if it's about... I mean, l listen... Here's here's the thing that we, we, we fail to think about. Why in the first place was there a clone of one of your classmates in that basement under that I mean 
that my point is there were clones of me and my my family and then of monica for some reason and then of monica what what, what she's i don't think she's like other kids i mean why would they have a clone of her specifically that That's... doesn't seem so what if it's not even about you what if it's about the clone that's Same true. thing, S Sauron was being held by some raven-esque thing in that lake. Hmm, that's true. Maybe we should go find Monica. Uh, uh give me and a And do what? Yeah, well, I mean, for all we know, she's... All I know is, from, from you know, work and such, is she's trouble. Yeah, I think, um, well, I think she and I bonded a, a little while past. Maybe I could um, get close to her, or hang out with her. Um, and as she, she looks like she has an idea and she closes her eyes. And... Um, Harvey, for me to tell you who to hang out with, but are you sure you want to keep her company? I don't think I'm I want echo. to, but uh, as I said, she closes her eyes and glows and uses her body transmutation ability to turn herself into a male version of herself. Oh. And then alters herself slightly so she doesn't look exactly like male Sparrow. Yeah. Tell me oh. about this. Uh... So... This is the, I, I see what you're doing here. But tell me about the process at work when you do this. Have you ever done this before? No, I don't think so, no. Have you ever thought about doing this before? I don't think so, no. So in the moment of you thinking about it, how does the concept of body shifting feel to you? I imagine at first, it feels, you know, just like whenever she changes into an animal. But since this is, I mean, it's an animal, but it's also a human shape. Um, so I think it feels odd in comparison. Yeah. Not, not necessarily unpleasant, just like flexing muscles you don't necessarily use all that often. So it's it's a strange feeling. It's an un, un, uh, unfamiliar feeling. Yes. This what? feels really weird. You look really weird. Oh, I, I was going for hot. Um, should I change something? Hey, I'm not a very good judge of hotness. Starlight? Maybe if you gave yourself a little bit of a beard? You look so baby-faced. I mean, we're high school students. But she might so? be the type to go for older guys. I, well, I, I, you don't have to be 60 to have a beard, you know? That is true. Uh, I think Sparrow closes her eyes again and grows a little taller. And she now has, like, a 5 o'clock shadow. How's this? <laughs> Definitely, definitely more convincing, yes. I have a, I have a question uh, relating to this. this. This is all, like, I, I imagine this is, like, very impressive, and this is also new to you. As a shapeshifter, this is something I'm really curious about, especially uh, considering the teenage angle. As a shapeshifter, do you ever experience dysmorphia? I think it's more general, you know, my whole physical form is a construct of my mind that I can shape however I want to. Yeah. So I would definitely say not um, not in the standard kind, more of, of the I'm not actually real kind. So it's be it becomes a question of existentialism for you? It's, it's, dis it's disassociation. It's not dysmorphia. Dysmorphia, speaking from extremely intense personal experience here, is a matter of feeling I'm not right. 
this association would be a matter of this is not right mm. or this is strange or I'm not sure this is real. But actual dysmorphia would be looking yourself in the mirror and honest to God, not knowing who it is looking back. Yeah, that was because you don't you I... don't you don't recognize not the looks. The looks are irrelevant to dysmorphia. It's the person behind the looks. Yeah, that was what I, I was curious about. Like, if, okay, if there was right. ever that kind of experience, given that, you know, like, what, what kind of relationship you would have to your your shape if it if you considered it just a construct of what you felt like? like I if... think for Sparrow, there's definitely been a... Since she looks exactly like Ileana North, but she doesn't actually consider herself to be Ileana North. She considers herself to be Sparrow, an aspect created. So in that case, it might have been weird to begin with, but I think it has grown to be, you know, this is this is the standard shape, That's which is also why her superhero with. shape is is her base shape. Makes sense. And the one that gets transformed when her marks change her outlook. All right. So you you have thank you for uh, elaborating on that. I'm I'm very curious about these things and uh, how they they might or might not affect your character. Both of those speak about uh, speak to the character. Um, so you are now in the shape of a uh, an older male. What now? How much older would you say? Um, I would say um, probably college age. Co college age. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tongue. <laughs> Tongue is not good. College student age. Uh, we need a guest appearance by Dr. Freud in this. Like, all of these, like, slip-ups. Like, college AIDS, <laughs> tongue is not good. I came. <laughs> it's... Ew! It's okay. Stuff going on. Daniel, that's more information than we, strictly speaking, need about our GM. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, turn it around on me. That's fine. Of course. <laughs> Screw you. No, it's good. No, so... thank you. I'd rather not, <laughs> Dr. Freud. Just keep keep this particular train rolling. Um, okay, so yeah, you're you're at like uh, high school senior, uh, about college age ish, in your appearance, oh. somewhere hovering there. All right. What's my name? Um... Have you already forgotten? <laughs> I mean, Starlight sends her a very yeah. Frank. I'm totally pulling your leg. My name is Frank. Frank. Yes. <laughs> Frankly, it's the best I can come up with. Yeah. <laughs> a, a yellow bulldozer falls out of the sky and crushes Diamond. Robotic humor. It's the best thing ever. She looks pleadingly at Starlight. Well, you could always be George. Then it wouldn't matter if you're curious. Starlight <laughs> runs for it. I'll just, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just hug him and squeeze him and call him George. <laughs> I think she... Lucas, okay, glances, better? I, I think she glances at, at her house and says, I think I'm Vincent. Why? Because that's the first name that popped up. Okay. That wasn't a pun. And we 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 uh, see this conversation happen now in in the background of a shot, and in the like foreground, just like off to the side of the panel, is the mailbox of the uh, of of your house, and it of course reads like uh, V North, uh, and then your your I forget what your mom is called. Theresa. Yeah, and yeah. V North, uh, T North. Uh, E North. Wait, I? I e I? Um, I think she would probably uh, move that. I don't know. She. It would definitely also have two T Norths. It's true. Anyway, yeah, it's it's clearly your father's name. 
Yes. All right, I need a surname. Oh, and a hot backstory. Maybe I backpacked through Europe. <laughs> Vincent, you are not in a Twilight book. No. Get over it. The con Kowalski. This conversation Kowalski. gets to this Kowalski. conversation. It's a very good American name with about, I don't know, five million of them. So, yes, Vincent Kowalski. This particular That's conversation and, like, the details of this plan gets to, like, fade out, right, as, as we... As we focus instead on like we, we cut to uh, we cut to what Vigil is doing and then it, the intent is to cut back to you and we see you yeah, initiate yeah. what this is. So, Vigil, my dude, you went to do research. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he arrives in at his um at his um home. Yeah. Uh, he the thing has kind been of... repaired since uh, since it was destroyed. Partially. Yeah. yeah, he probably grabs some, you know, something to clean up his face, but mostly he rummages through, um, like through uh, shelves looking for something. Mm -hmm. And then after he, after a moment, he find he uh, finds it behind some, you know, behind some things. I'm so all things. He probably blows some dust from it. He pulls out like uh, pulls out a key. Mm -hmm. He goes to the back of the house and, well, to the yeah, to the back of the house where is the uh, something that looks a little bit like those, you know, those kind of double doors to the back in the ground, double doors to the basement. Not like a storm cellar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they look probably a little bit more not fancier, but like you know. I get you. Um, you know, like more used than just a storm cellar. You know, and he he uh like puts a key in it, opens it up. You know, takes 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 a flashlight with him, um, and goes downstairs into into a part of the house that he didn't use in a while. Uh, this is calling basically on the feature of my home, the library of valuable tomes. Cool. Yeah. So and basically, dusty wall-to-wall yeah. -wall shelfage going on. As you you comb through that, what are you looking yeah. for? Yeah, yeah, he's basically pulling every single book that he can on, uh, on, uh, mentioning like witches, covens, uh, uh, you know, dark magic, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, like. He basically is doing research on the. Um, sure, you pull like a couple of volumes. You know, They're like three old books stacked in mm. front of you on a table. Um, yeah. Rummaging through the first one is totally not what you're looking for, but at least mm. it's kind of you know it, it speaks to the same subjects, but it's, this is not it. And mm. as you take the first one, put it aside, we see the the cover of the second one. Um, is uh, is like a memoir or something. Uh, say it's called uh, "On the Topic of the Most Hated Avalonian Lodge," and then it's like written by uh, a member of the vigil. It's like long mm. dead. And the third one is the Malleus Maleficarum. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, yep. the third one is the worst book ever. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I think that's the 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 second one is what catches your eye. Yeah. So you basically start like thumbing through it, like looking for uh, looking for patterns and you know what similarities. You um, like, I know you said patterns similarities, but like, it, yeah, what, what, what is uh, what is the thing we are researching here? I get witches, but you know, I'm sure you're not meant to like. Oh, and they fly brooms, right? That's the thing. And also, black yeah. cats are witch stuff. Like, I'm sure that's not stuff you're looking for. No, he's looking for like a um. A description, kind of like structure. If it's a, and and that you know, he's looking for also for illustrations of, uh, you know, more you know of the originator and stuff for history and and obviously the and obviously the uh, he's uh, he's looking for a best way to, um, I would say 
uh, find mo mostly find them instead of you know because find them, if it's an old book it will be like finding them in modern world will be, will be much more different than yeah of course you know. so, so you're looking uh, on like yeah I get you this this is like you read through this book uh, it, it has some like anachronisms in it it was like written in the early 60s or something um, mm. and you 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 rummage through and it, it speaks about uh, a group of a group of witches who's apparently like long been in in like a kind of shadow war with the vigil um they're not typically spoken of because it is believed that um it was believed for a long period that they were uh, like beaten to near insignificance but they've always routinely like reappeared yeah and whenever they do they like arrive as a thorn in the side of the vigil um mm -hmm. they are said to uh, descend from um from the the arch witch herself uh from from morgan le fay in uh, and and her practices back in arthurian times it is said mm -hmm. that they take their ideas and their practices from her the most reviled enemy and on the topics of like how how do you how do you best their magics well the trick about about magic is magic has very little counter um magic is is versatile and dangerous and hard um the best with the best friends way... like with friends like these who needs animus precisely who needs animus um but the the best tools apparently like that the book speaks of is, is the tools granted to the vigil by the lady of the lake uh mm -hmm. that are themselves magical and anathema in a certain aspect to um to the sorceries employed right like excalibur will banish the evil uh and mm -hmm. as an extent so will like the, the uh, you know the bracers and the magical weapons employed by your order because they are essentially like part of that um and then like other magics make a formidable counter to magic however um the order has not really employed magic since the time of the the arch wizard um since merlin left and has been lost to the order for many years mm. it doesn't say dead because like he, when it's like lost to the order for many years it this was like in the 1500s like way later than arthurian times so mm. it is well known that he is a long-lived old grog uh grubbard, but he's not been around for a long time mm. he's probably found a pub somewhere he's on his 250 millionth beer or something yes yeah. somewhere so, somewhere in like the uk it's like he, he an, created an old, an old the pub. Pub. <laughs> he, he created the punk movement <laughs> um yeah, it's basically he's like, and and obviously he's, um, you know, pe uh, like uh, paying attention to the, um, the name La Fay because, the he I've heard, yeah, I've heard that before, you know, um, really, yeah. Imagine there's like I think you could like you flip through the pages and some of them have these like these like um. Uh, like illustrations, some of them done by hand in like a kind of the um, mm -hmm. like the diary from um, from the third Indiana Jones movie, uh, but mm -hmm. some of some of the pictures in it are also like uh, like actual photographs, and mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the things that it says is that um, that uh, a, a signature move of the Avalonian Lodge is um, is the shadow construct, uh, a trick mm -hmm. by which uh, the shadow of uh, the shadow of the witch is imbued by some kind of malefic sentience and and is made to act on their behalf, uh, and it is believed that they use a kind of like uh, body talisman to do so. And there is a picture of of the hand of a of, of a witch like wearing handcuffs, um, with a little like black stick figure um, uh, painted on the hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, he didn't see that in person because it's just in a far, well, not far. But... No, a, lo a lot of yeah. this is definitely like not fully contextualized for um for Finn. A lot of this yeah. is in service to the reader, right? Who mm -hmm. could be like, oh shit, 
I knew it. Yeah. I, I speculated all along, right? Like, especially since we actually saw Monica do that. We didn't, but you know, the reader saw Monica, uh, oh. you know, pull the the stick figure back onto her skin after she had used this thing the first time when when um, when uh, Diamond and uh, Starlight. I, I, was that. I don't remember if that was Monica. Uh, yeah, it totally was. No. It, it totally well, was. Okay. Yeah. I just remember we didn't see it, but the viewer saw it. Yep, exactly. She she were the owner of uh, the shadow that were attacking Graves' car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's uh, he's like pro like getting the well, definitely making notes on the well, not note on the Lafay name and the the cha like to look out for the champ. He basically po basically he makes like a bookmarks in the book and he pockets the book uh, or pockets it. Yeah, it puts it in like a messenger bag or something. Um, uh, he he actually leaves the uh, because like he if he cannot find any other tomes and stuff. Well, he, he probably like, just thumbs through the third tome. What, so what's the, that? The third tome does not contain any knowledge pertaining specifically to this. Yeah. Um, however, in in the back end of the third tome, there's like a you know like a paper binder. Mm -hmm. Um. That's like way more recent than the book itself is, and mm -hmm. when you you pull out the um, when you, you pull out the binder and like and open it, it has like a, an actual like printed report on it. Uh, so there's <laughs> nothing like you know it's it's not ye older scrolls. It's more like mm -hmm. this is new. This is a thing that's happened recently, and um, it is it speaks to um, it speaks to like an, an investigation done by a uh, a, a, a France based member of the vigil. Uh, mm -hmm. whose name I, I don't want to make up on the top of my head. Uh, but he speaks to the, like, a, a sudden uh, escalation on on what he has believed to be, uh, like, the, the recoming of the Avalonian Lodge. He's, like, mm -hmm. observed uh, some witchcraft going on, and then it seems like suddenly they have grown way stronger, and they have grown way more vicious. Uh, this has happened very suddenly. Um in the span of the last, I think, four years, maybe three years, um, and it is uh, and it is accompanied, um, like uh, with with like pictures of of uh, well, I don't want to say crime scenes, but like areas where uh, sorceries has have been wrought, and places where battle have been fought. So it's like pictures of destruction and devastation, and you notice. In most of these pictures, it's not like drawn attention to in the book, but you spy it because you know mm. to look for it. Uh, Raven iconography. Mm. Yes, yeah, and That's he... all kinds of creepy because that kind mm. of indicates that the Raven has been around before. Hmm. This uh, so the I I think it's wasn't it like three years ago or so that uh, that you you got messed up, uh, Iliana. I don't actually remember the exact time. So just just because we can't remember the exact time, let's say it was three years ago, and this this report sure. is from like two years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he is basically like just. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't know about the Black Raven. No. Yeah. So, but uh, but uh, this this uh, talks about the witches. So it's like he probably pockets the well, takes this to the bag too. And it's like and he thinks for a minute like who, who can he ask? Okay. Uh, just now, question out of the game. Have we ever introduced the caretaker for the of the house? No. Okay. Uh Damn it. That NPC would be useful. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's basically like, uh, yeah, he finishes like washing up the, uh, well, the face, and he actually, he actually put like folds and put the, takes the hoodie into the into the bag. Um, of course, he grabs something. He grabs something like a sandwich from the fridge and <laughs> just. And uh, and yeah, on on his way out, he locks in the cellar and um, 
tries to dial the well, takes the phone and, and tries to call in call. Um so that's his Starlight. Alright. So you, you try to call Starlight and we, we cut to Starlight's phone in a bag somewhere. Uh and mm. we're we're inside a bar uh with the music pumping. Uh what? In in as you were you've gone to find Monica. Uh, but ideology. Starlight doesn't have a bag. Whatever, right? It's it's wherever your phone is at. Um, you had it in your in in the pocket of your hoodie earlier. Yeah, yeah, but, but she had it in her hand. So now it's probably in her bra. <laughs> sure. So with we, so fine. So the imagery is of your bosom and upwards lighting up inside like a dimly lit bar where like you know like crisscrossing. Uh, Beams and of buzzing. chromatic mm -hmm. light, and I uh, think that will get a very dry remark from from um, uh, from uh, uh, Diamond, just looking at her and saying, um, uh, "Starlight, your breasts are lighting up <laughs> and vibrating." Starlight is taking her phone out and says, "Yes, they do that." <laughs> That actually gets, you know, the, that actually makes the robot sit there for a moment and go, they're not supposed to do that. You know, she actually has to check her database first. <laughs> <laughs> Running diagnostic. Um. Um, and then Starlight picks up the phone. Yeah. So, Finn, on, on the other end, you can hear like a, like a, you know, throbbing bass line of some kind of like, you know, dance club slash bar uh, in downtown Halcyon. And you can vainly, like vaguely hear um, Starlight like trying to call through the phone, like yeah, in the background, <laughs> trying to speak. You're muted, brain. Stop yeah. being muted, he brain. Pro he probably at the first sign of it, it just like pulls away the phone from the face. God damn it! It's like. Puts it back in, but like a bit, a little bit further from the ear. It's like, where are you? Aren't you in the hospital? This is the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hospital waiting room. What? We, oh, we, this, is, this is the hospital. We're listening to Doctor Alvin. Halcyon City knows how to thrash. Um. The answer is what? Yeah. You know, you know what? Hold on for a second, and just like he, he, he hangs up and actually just texts her. <laughs> Hold what uh, for a second? Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he actually just texts her like, like found, found some, found, found some information. Where are you? Uh, she sends the address thingy with a note <laughs> looking for Monica. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, she sends like a selfie in a bar. Yeah. yeah, with hashtag looking for Monica. <laughs> right. uh, he's like, yeah, like if he knows where the place is, place is like, like be there shortly. Yeah. Sure, it's it's some kind of you know, um, oh, it's that I I have a hard time finding the words. Is it's it that, high class or is no? It so it's that kind of bar and dance. It's the place is called the underground. That's the kind of place you're in. Oh, so it's it's like um, Tusenfoot. <laughs> Not quite, <laughs> but you know, called the armory. It's it's the kind of place that you know it doesn't actually have uh, wallpaper or anything on the inside. You know, the interior is brickwork. Um, it tries to be punk and really hip. Yeah. It, de it definitely has aspirations to be, you know, like, uh, very bass like, and very punk. Um, like like the place where... <laughs> That's actually good. It's called the Poly Armory. Mm -hmm. Poly um, Armory. <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's trying to be very new age and cool about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The place and is failing close. miserably. That's that's debatable. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that you're a connoisseur of... Um, of you know, if punk, it's called the Holy Armory, it's already failing. It's not. It's called the Underground. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, like he heavy baseline work. happening. Lots of like moving bodies in in like two separate stories with like a staircase leading down the middle. 
um, a bar, uh, some some booth area going on, and uh, a stage where uh, uh, you know a bunch of um, bunch of like loudspeakers have been set up, and there's a, a, a disc booth. <laughs> right. Well, she hangs up and puts the phone back where she found it. There. Now they can call me again. So we we see the two of you probably <laughs> see it at the bar or somewhere in the upper area l- overlooking the place. Uh, but we also see you, White Sparrow, in your in your now male shape, um, uh, like on the lower floor uh, among the the many people down here. And as you you peer through the crowd, you spy the form of of Monica, um, currently dancing with some girl you don't know. Well, hmm. Ah, well, this is when Sparrow realizes that she has no experience with seducing girls in a bar. Um, so I think she will find somewhere nearby to, you know, lean against the wall and look cool while eyeing uh, Monica, trying to get, uh, to catch her eyes if she looks up. And it's... it's like a cool head nut. It's it speaks to me in like a certain way that that the place your mind goes to, and I'm not saying this because I'm such a party animal, because God knows I'm not. But the the place that your mind went to was supporting the wall. That's what the cool people do, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, I'm I'm too cool for this kind of leaning. Sure. Um, and I then know. if if Monica, uh, when she catches Monica's eye, she'll do like, you know, a. a an up nod kind of thing. Absolutely. So, Monica looks, notices you, uh, like through the crowd of writhing bodies and blaring lights, um, and you up nod her. Uh, she she like squ- smirks at you and and uh, throws her head and like grins at you, uh, inviting you over. Right. Why not? I, I guess Vincent is going to go dance with her. So you ford the bodies, and uh, and she uh, when when you get over to her, uh, she she doesn't stop moving. She just like kind of half turns to you, um, and uh, like still smiling. She's like, "What? What do you want?" You. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that. I was trying so hard to figure something else to say. Yeah, how are you gonna seduce a girl? Come on, Me, Stella. Vincent, you, Monica. We can oh, do yeah. this. Come so on, I'm Sparrow. <laughs> You've partied with her. What worked earlier? You can do this. What do you want? Wanna go find a cooler scene? Do I know you? Do you want to? She like tilts her head and and looks you up and down like very very like overtly. <laughs> like I don't know. Look like kind of a tool. <laughs> I think um it's Vincent looks around and then sends her a uh, a crooked grin, does a flourish uh, with his hand and, you know, a small uh, glowing rose uh, is now offered to Monica. Dude, that is the cringiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Holy shit. And she, now she full turns to you and has commenced dancing with you. Um, but yeah, it's like, what even, what are you, some kind of magician? I guess you could say that. I can't tell if that is the lamest thing I've ever seen. Or if you're just, or if you're just laying it on really thickly. (laughs) He shrugs. It worked, didn't it? I don't know. What do you mean worked? You turned around. If that's the extent of what you want tonight, then congratulations, mate. (laughs) 
I don't know. You seemed cool. Well, one of us had to. She grins. So, for real, do you want to find a cooler scene than this? What's cooler than this? She says, gesturing to the booth. I think I can make it uncool. Yeah. All I have to do is get on the dance floor and do the robot. <laughs> I, uh... Sparrow uh, grins at her again and says, I tend to prefer areas I'm not allowed. Really? Me too, she says. At this point, her partner is like, Getting like getting up in in her business and like dancing closer to like demand attention, uh, and then like realizing that you're having a conversation just starts kind of leaning on Monica a bit. Um, <laughs> he's like, "Well, where do you suppose we go then?" Yeah, she and she's she's looking at you. This is the moment where Sparrow realizes that you're being challenged to find something like to mention something cool and underground. Which is just totally not stuff you know about. <laughs> Ever been to the roof of the police station? Are you telling me there's a party at the roof of the police station? I'm telling you that could be. Are you insane? She says, laughing. Nah, it's only insane if we get caught. Dude, I can't tell if you're crazy. Guess you'll have to find out then. Cool. Provoke her. That's my girl, thinking like a rebel. Go, Sparrow! <laughs> That's superior, right? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> oh, well, I guess that marks my fifth potential for this session, so yay. Grats. So, <laughs> I think we, we, we see you, like, lay it on, and, like, new form, never done this before, trying to appear, like, cool and hip and underground and being like, oh, yeah, I, I totally get down with the, you know, the flow of things, right? Things flow, like, in nature, with a stream. I know about streams. And, yeah, it, like, it... At the end of, of your attempt to, to woo her, she she just kind of, like, tosses her head at you and, like, half turns to her, her dance partner. And she's like, dude, fuck off. Why why do we want Monica to follow us in the first place? I, well, I guess um, we just kind of wanted to spy on her, but I suppose we don't actually need her to follow us for that to happen. Yeah, so she, she just, like... Stops paying, like, she clearly, like, rejects you, right? She's like, dude, fuck off. Go support the wall again, weirdo. I think, uh... Can, can you see what happens at the dance floor from where we're sitting? Like, is there, you know... Yeah, you can Here's totally the bar, that. here's the railing, and you're sitting there, and you can look down on the dancing people. Yeah, you're a bit elevated uh, in respect to the dance floor, so you can, like, mm. look down on, all, on what's going on. How far down is it? It's just, like, it's four like, steps down. Steps down. Four steps down? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think... Starlight um, smirks. I don't think... And by that point, point, by that point, no. uh, when she speak, while she's speaking, uh, Diamond is getting up. I don't think he knows how to pick up... Go Where are you going, Diamond? <laughs> and at that moment, she grabs the handrails and swings her legs over it and drops to the dance floor. Uh -oh. And land like a cool three-point superhero landing. A, li a little bit of the dance floor clears to make room for the new arrival in her shit kicker boots. Already, she's already she's sur already searching the the um, uh, the you know the web for for dance references. <laughs> you want to like? She's, she moves well. That's the point. So yeah. you know. You see if you got the moves like Jagger here. <laughs> um, <laughs> depends on what's the style of the club. Because There's... I mean, obviously, uh, what's her face? Uh, Diamond is is. This is gonna sound so cheesy, considering what she is, but she's very much a heavy metal type. So, yeah. Are you familiar with? Um... <laughs> I just caught that reference now. I feel yeah. It's like, <laughs> the, the music playing here is definitely like uh, synth punk. Ugh. That kind of like uh, you know like not like very, Ramstein, very electric, um, like monomer <laughs> and stuff like that. 
Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Don't egg it. I like that stuff. Ugh. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> she, um, uh, uh, well, she still, you know, um, yeah, she moves on to the dance floor. She doesn't need a partner. She's too fucking good to need a partner. Of course. You she wanna, can dance all on her the own. Dance floor? Yes, I do. It's awesome. Absolutely want to own the dance floor. And, um, See if she can find the right dance to dance, though. Because the thing is, the thing is, Monica knows who Diamond is, at least oh, yeah. from a, you know... A, 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 the janitor. A, but she's also seen her fight. Mm-hmm. She was the one who produced that first shadow monster, so she knows who she is. But yeah, she uh, she wants to make sure that Monica sees her. So you you come up upon Monica when she's dancing with this like girl you don't know. It's like mm-hmm. a blonde girl with like streaks of electric blue in her hair, mm-hmm. uh, and this happens like you're, you're approaching as we see the rejection of of the camouflaged uh, white sparrow. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's just being I, being shut down hard. I think uh, Sparrow give, gives Monica a salute and then, you know, turns into something and is gone. Yeah. Cool. And uh, as as you vanish and you would like vanish into the crowd, uh, coming up on the dance floor, swinging around like. Kicking her feet, we see Diamond come a rocking, um, yep. and uh, and yeah, you absolutely like. What if you if your aim is to catch the attention of of um, of Monica, you can absolutely succeed in doing so. Yeah. Um, so so that's what she's trying to do. What do you do? Like when when you have her eye, what do you do? Uh, she looks at the. Unfortunate, unfortunate miscreant that uh, Monica has thrown her tender affections on for the evening. And uh, she looks towards her, and then she does. Uh, she she basically does this whole. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, you're you know, like her you're... her whole facial expression when she catches Monica's eyes next time is, is that really the best you could find? I think Starlight. Catches on where Diamond is going, follows. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Diamond? <laughs> but <laughs> doesn't say it. Stops up and oh, hello, Monica. Okay, <laughs> so you you're doing this like you're, you're being like you know giving a sign of rejection to this girl and being like, what what even what are you doing? Who is yeah, this person? Yeah, seriously. Who is um, this? Yeah, sure. And uh, as I think as you do so, um, and and Starlight comes up right. She Monica kind of like sees what you're doing and turns. Like mm-hmm. seeming to like be kind of like pissed, like it's building. She's not had a good mm-hmm. time with some dude who just came up on her before, and now someone is like, uh, is like dissing, dissing her date. Yeah. Uh, so as she's turning, uh, she's about to like say something to you. You can see it on her face. She has that kind of like, let me just, and then like walking into the conversation, Starlight appears, uh, and that catches uh, catches Monica for a second. She's like, what? Hi, dude. Hey, dude. Hello! What's up? Not much. Hello. I wanted to dance, but I'm not as good as her. She uh, fingers diamond, you know, makes the thumb a diamond. <laughs> Paging Dr. Freud. <laughs> oh my god. What? She's moving well. Yeah, I know, but you said that you you you, you fingered her. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> Damn it! Oh, this is gonna turn into one of those nights. Yes. Um, um, she she does the thumb toward diamond motion. Yes. Uh, mouth. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> it didn't do it on purpose. I swear. <laughs> Oh, good lord. Yes, um, and she, um, at that <laughs> Now point... I suddenly get why the fuck everyone was laughing. <laughs> yes, and, well, Diamond, um, literally dances around, uh, Starlight, you know. In <laughs> Don't rub it very, in. Very, you know, getting real close. Sure. You get your freak on. Real freak. Oh. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> moving, you know, she's moving very, very close and 
let's just say it gets a real just real intimate for a second there. All right, cool. How does that make you feel, Starlight? Do you reciprocate? Yeah, why not? She's comfortable around Diamond. Exactly. All right. So I want at least ask... it. It, I... it makes us. It makes us smile that she dances close, and then she just you know goes along with it. Do any of you feel in any particular way in this moment? Uh, Diamond is asexual, so she. I mean, she she's doing this to get a reaction out of Monica. Of course. Okay. But Starlight? She might think there's a little more, but she doesn't know Diamond is asexual, so that might be a reason she for that. Doesn't, she doesn't have the subroutines installed. <laughs> no. Tell me what love is. <laughs> no, she, does, she knows she knows what love is. She does have the, the, the understanding of emotions, obviously. Oh, yeah. so she does know that. She's just... <sighs> I don't think she would be clinically asexual, but she's never been attracted to anyone. Mm, That's the thing. She doesn't, she, she, it's, it kind of, you know, it kind of involves certain processes that she doesn't have. Yeah, of course. Now you're four years old. Come on. Not only that, but she's, you know, her only bodily fluids are made from, you know, from, from uh, ingested and reproduced uh, or reconstituted uh, hot dogs. Yikes. That sounds, <laughs> yes. that sounds greasy. Um, She's lacking the hormones for which makes one horny. Exactly. All right. So, okay, so I just, we, we definitely linger. On Sadly, this moment, Starlight but... is, Starlight is point... not blessed like that. Yeah, no. But, but, think, we we definitely linger, probably... of, we linger on this in acknowledgement of that like, moment yeah. for Starlight. Um, she could, yeah, I think, in fairness, though, I think, just to round that off, I think. Uh, 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 she would be able to fall in love on a on a you know purely intellectual level, but yeah, anyway. yeah, like you know, like you you may be asexual, but you're not necess yeah. necessarily a romantic. Exactly. Hey, maybe maybe you're if if ever that doctor gets a uh, you know redemption arc, he can give her that kind of thing. Yeah. That's Who knows? Amazing. Like love, but like an old like floppy disk, just like. <laughs> Installing yes. hormones. This is gonna fuck you up, just as so you know it. <laughs> love is only hormones, and while it happens, you hear Barry Manilow playing in the background. <laughs> love only <laughs> takes off. Yeah, I've downloaded oh, uh... all the sex moves I could think of onto this disc. Love only takes off. One point forty-five megabytes. You know, and what what also will be on the disc? What is love? Oh, Baby, don't, don't hurt, hurt me. me. Okay, I'm taking my headphones off. Don't hurt off. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, and have a version of that song actually. And so, so yeah, that, and and just I'm out. going to seize control of the situation now. <laughs> yes, please do. So we linger but on the shot of you. I know, I know you are, but it's fine. I'm I'm the tyrannical overlord. At some point you will oust me and build a glorious anarchist utopia in the middle of yes. this game. But, yes. So well we, we linger in on the scene in recognition of, of what Starlight feels. There is definitely like some some shots of Starlight's face. As we get like the like, uh, we get shown through through imagery that you know like maybe there is something here for you and you're not quite sure. It's not like it's just like oh my god I love you and then there's like hearts at the border, right? It's not that, but it's we we definitely get the we the we just get a we just get a close up of uh, Starlight that's for a moment caught it back, then it changes to a large smile and slightly red faced. Yeah. I think Very slightly. One. Yeah, I, I dig that. So you you want to draw Monica's attention, and when you do this, I think she like she mirrors you with her own partner, uh, <laughs> to, like because she's she she get, she got what you were doing right. You were being like, yeah, let me just insult the person you're dancing with. So now that you're doing this, she's not gonna be upstaged by you, right? So she like just like leans into her own partner. Yeah. Um, and at this point, Finn arrives in the club. Yeah. <laughs> step, what step, an image it comes into. Yeah. Oh god. Step yeah. through the door to the, uh, like to the the writhing bodies on the dance floor, or like all of them, of course, in different like beams of saturated light. So you can half and half appreciate what people are wearing, but also half the time they just like look to be completely one particular color, right? Like mm. now people are green and everything they're wearing is green. Now they're purple. Now they're pink. 
and mm. then like sometimes there are like bright flashes yeah. of what people are actually wearing. Did he um, get uh, the marker off his face? Yes. Yes. Aww, you, you you're no you fun. As you enter the uh, the underground, uh, you come upon White Sparrow. Yeah. Um. Some college age uh, aged dude comes up next to you and says, "Sup." And he's like, he just like looks at him is like, uh, yeah, so. he looks oddly yeah. familiar. Uh, like, unless you're trying to like, um, take exp- a, a, a specific, blah, blah, just stop him, then he's just going to up nod you and just like <laughs> move past. I think when you move past, he'll, he'll catch your, uh, your wrist. <laughs> like, uh, Want to dance? <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> he he like put, puts puts a hand on your cheek like baby you're not type. <laughs> Rejected again. <laughs> I think um... no, you, you really are not his type because his his type isn't playing tonight. And I think this guy gets uh, a teasing expression. Uh, and and says, really, I can be whatever you want. And then he or Sparrow tries to mimic Aaron's appearance. <laughs> cool. Okay, so oh, I'm, yeah, I'm he... almost I'm almost sad. This is like you know like heavy retro futuristic synth music, because for a second now, right now, I just want uh, "Shut Up and Dance with Me" by Walk the Moon to play in this scene, but it's not. Um, instead. Uh, yeah, this this happens, and I don't know if you if you catch on that uh, that you're looking at White Sparrow, or if you're like, oh shit, I'm speaking to a shapeshifter. I mean, uh, you would oh have seen God. her transform before, but you might yeah. not notice in this this light. Yeah, he's like he's like he puts the two and two together. It's like, oh oh, you wanna play? Oh, you wanna play? in his mind in his mind? Oh, you wanna play? He puts the other ha- hand on the other cheek and it's like, oh my love, and he goes for a kiss. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, he calls oh your bluff. <laughs> Daniel, you have been one eighty. Yeah. You what? Are I you? Want I... to turn into a llama. <laughs> you want to turn into a llama? Change into a llama. That means yeah. you are in the middle of a nightclub. That might be a bad idea. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so I, I need. I want to follow along here because I'm. I'm having too good of a time to not like fully paint a picture here. So. When your bluff is being called and Finn just 180s you on this one, it's like, oh yeah? Well, pucker up, sugar tits. Um, <laughs> what, like, is, is turning into a llama a, like, fuck, no reaction? Or are you playing? Like, what, what is your reaction to this? Because um, I know that love is a thing on your mind. I know that you have a thing where you're like, oh, Aaron is pretty cute. But also, I'm not too good. I'm too bad for him. Like, so, yeah, and I'm just I, saying, so Finn when, looks pretty tight when, right now. Yeah, so when Finn is like, hello, I'm suddenly, like, super model-esque, and I'm gonna kiss your face. Are you like, no, 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 Or is this like a... Take me on horse. I, I think, um, uh, I think Monica might actually have rubbed off on Sparrow somewhat. And since she's been doing all this, she's definitely in a mood of, sure, why not? Let's use my powers for fun. Excellent. So, llama it is. I think Um, perhaps just a llama head. (laughs) That's even worse. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. no. But then you're still in the middle of a nightclub, though, so there's a pretty good chance you're going to get spotted. Sure, your head turns into a llama. Like obviously, someone. Not, not an entire llama, just the, no. you know. <laughs> no, I, I understand. It's not like it's not like a llama figurine on your neck. I get that. It's... No, you could it's... probably do that. It's like that uh, that villain from that one episode of Teen Titans, who's like a spider, but he's just like he has like a body of a high schooler oh, thing yeah. going under it. Yeah. It's like, my head is an entire spider. It's just like, oh god, mm. but yours is a llama. Oh, that's. The worst. Okay, so <clears throat> your turn, Virgil. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, do you just close your eyes and and grab the smooch with the llama, or do you notice uh, that there is a llama and you're like, f- f- uh. I would say he like, last last minute last minute is like, is that just stops right before? He's like, 
well played. And it just like, gives like a little peck on the nose of the llama. The, the llama person turns back into Sparrow <laughs> with a huge grin on her face. It's like in the, in the background, like on the wall, on the, the brick wall of this, this place, we, we see like a series of like, you know, that there are posters in layers and layers, right? Like old, worn out stuff. And there's like a poster, like very prominently placed in the, in the frame of you, like playing this little trick on each other. That's just like, love lows no boundaries. Please, poly armory. Oh, yeah. Love knows one boundary and it's a llama head. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is no beauty and the beast. <laughs> so you narrowly, uh, you one up each other until you you reach the point where you're like, you know what? No, llamas, where we're gonna cut it. And <laughs> no, he did like he did stop for a moment, like said said said, said like you know, well played, and give that just like you know, he was who French the llama just gave like little you know peck on the nose of the llama, it's like. <laughs> All right, so that's the thing that happened. You notice yeah. that nearby someone is looking at at the man llama. Um, <laughs> it's it's a thing that is drawing attention now. It's not like the entire room has turned around and spotted it, but someone is looking. Well, yeah. the llama turned into Sparrow. It, it, yeah, he probably just puts puts his arm around around Sparrow just to obscure her face a little bit, you know, just and just turn away from the like. You know, yeah. 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 Some people are looking, and if they yeah. if they ask, they've been taking the wrong drugs tonight. That's yeah. So bad. so people understand that supers are a thing, right? So watching someone do something extraordinary in the cityscape is like it's being not treated the same. You know, it's 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 definitely extraordinary, but it's not like people are like whoa, falling off their chairs. It's like the, akin to spotting a celebrity in a nightclub. You're like, oh. Hey, hey, look at that, right? Let me get my phone out and take a picture of that. Um, that kind of treatment where people are like, ah, oh, it, it's not screamy stuff until someone starts blowing things up, right? Then then, then at that point, when, when Killer Croc walks through the door, people react mm -hmm. differently. Well, um, yeah, that's Killer Croc, for goodness sake. Yeah. So we, we, we see the two of you, like, approach the dance floor. You've been, like, shown, yeah. what, like, the, the space. Uh, and we cut down to the dance floor where we have just, like, a wide panel of the two, like, the four of you dancing. And then there's, like, like a wide gap between. It's like, no, we don't want anything to do with each other. And yeah. this is specifically between you, uh, Diamond, and, and Monica, right? Who's, who, who's, who, like, uh, got into the conversation with you in the wrong mood. I don't like her, so, you know, she's trouble, as I said. Mm -hmm. But, um... The question becomes, what will you do? I'm just keeping an eye on her. Because, I mean, it's a nice evening, right? So having a good time dancing is always fun, but... Well, yeah, except I'm still contemplating grabbing her and kissing her. <laughs> Monica? Yeah, for, you know, just, just, to, get, just to get her flying off a handle but i'm not going to but it's you know just to see her reaction um but sh no i think uh, i think after a while yes after after you know having danced for a little while i think um i think diamond deliberately keeps trying to one up her Okay, what does that look like? You know, her moves, her moves, basically, every time Monica pulls a, a, a clever move, uh, Diamond will have already processed the next one. So you, you find, because this is not like it's a bad idea, but you find that this is not the most useful tactic. You test it out and you're like, oh, that's not how it works. Because she is not particularly engaged in co like in competing with you. No. It's, it's more like... Uh, like she, she's very much here, like on her own time for her own sake, doing what she mm -hmm. wants. Mm -hmm. So, the the reason that they're like, you find that out, right? Like she's she's having yeah, yeah. her own time. She's um, there having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 uh, the, uh, the girl she's dancing with is not. Is that someone from school? That's a good question. Um, no, it's not. It's from oh, it's from like another school in the area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's it's not a classmate or anything. No, nope. uh, or an ex-classmate. Uh, so dancing happens for a little while, and 
once like it's clear that people have been danced out for a moment uh mm -hmm. sh they move to leave the dance floor uh monica like moves to leave and and pulls her uh, her lady friend by the arm uh to the water bar mm -hmm. well follow so at this point they not 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 standing right next to them <laughs> no I'll it's just like breathing people... breathing down their ear just yeah you know. no no i'll let two people be between me and them of course so they go to the bar. They pass straight mm -hmm. by you, Finn, and uh, you, Monica. No, not Monica. What I'm saying, and you, White Sparrow. <laughs> Aha. So no, wait. You you return to your actual form, right? I did. Um, Ileana. I did. Yeah. Well, so not she... my actual form. My my no. civilian form. Yeah. Uh, she totally sees you as she's passing you by. She she stops at that moment, approaching the bar. She's like, "Oh my God, Illy! Hi, how are you doing?" And she like throws herself at you. Oh, I uh, guess I dodges. <laughs> guess what? So, sorry. I I, I, I guess uh, I return the, the 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 hug. Yeah, she hugs you, and then she like lets go with one arm, wraps the other arm around the, the other girl she has. Then she has a camera up in the air. She's like selfie, poof, and then she's <laughs> caught the three of you. Um, uh, uh, hi, Monica. Hi. What's up? What are you doing here? Uh, well, I guess I just wanted to blow off some steam. How about you? Can I fist bump her on the way, by the way? Uh, yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, uh, really? White Sparrow. Sure. Uh, sure. Just, and then heading on further up to the bar. Well, that light stops with a, hey, Ali. Uh, Hey. I didn't know you liked Gaslight. I... This is like in reference to the guy playing. And she, I just decided uh, he's called Gaslight. She looks up, then looks back at Monica and smiles uh, sheepishly. And says, okay, this is a bit embarrassing. But you've kind of inspired me to try new things. Girl, I... Nothing could please me more than hearing that. You needed to get out of that house. I mean, jeez, fuck me, that place. Sorry to say, happy to see you here. Sure. Oh, no, who's the uncandy? Oh, this is uh, this is Finn from the school. You remember, right? Yeah, I do. Hey, Finn, did you do something with your everything? <laughs> with your everything. He, he's like he's like tr like throwing his hair slightly back. You mean this this whole thing? Well, it's always been like this. You never noticed. Really? No, I didn't. Well, you need to look at people more. You snooze, you lose. What can I say? Yeah, I su suppose it's. I've never seen you without the other cutie, so maybe this is just the first. I time know, I know. It's hard hard for me to one up him. Hmm. Well, I'm trying though. This is like a very like I can clearly uh, unashamedly look you up and down, huh? Well, not he, bad. He, he he definitely not slightly flexes. <laughs> Which means he totally does. I'm very sure. So she she all but like drags you Illy to to the bar and sits down and like uh, calls for a drink and something alcoholic is being served. I well, this is one way to go about the plan. Mm-hmm. You were rejected as a man. She likes you as a girl. Learn it. So. <laughs> I'm so happy to see someone here I can actually dig. You wouldn't believe the fucking tool bag who came up on me earlier. <laughs> Hello? Just the worst. I don't even want to talk about it. I forgot what he looks like. Forgettable. Fucking asshole. Well, for someone forgettable, you sure seem hung up about him. You know, maybe it was love at first sight. <laughs> or maybe he was just an asshole, skeevy dude. She shrugs. Forget him then. Girl, way ahead of you. She passes you like a glass of something. <laughs> something brown and ailey. Let's have some brown alien stuff sure 
So what is your plan here? Because you you have you've now like you're here with her, um, and she seems to just be having a good time right now. I you think... learned that you learned that the person she's with is called Jill, uh, and that she attends another high school in the area. But that's it. Well, I I think this is the now and um, Ileana and Monica become bestest of friends, so I can hang out with her more. Yeah, I mean, she already likes you, right? Um, you have hung out a couple of times before this. Yep. I guess um, I'm also being nice to Jill. She's being nice back, of course. Um, mm. Seem like to, to show an interest in like who you are and what you're doing and how you know Monica. Um, and then Monica, like, where like uh, enters the conversation, being like, "So, Janet's a lady." Notice you hang out with her. Yeah, she's cool. You sure about that? Yeah, pretty chill. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I just got the wrong impression, I guess. I. I guess. Why? What happened? Ah, uh, nothing. Again, as I said, nothing. Probably caught something bad on the dance floor. Thought I saw something. I probably didn't. She's cool. She and she leans over the bar and like looks at you, Diamond. She like just mm -hmm. like uh, waves you down for a second, and then when she has your attention, she up nods you and lifts her glass, uh, and then she returns her attention to. Can uh, I make out what she's got in that glass? Yeah, it's beer. Yeah, it's beer. All right. Well, I'll get the. Um... I'll get the uh, a bartender to send around down there. Cool. And I... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is totally uh, what's going on. So when she does that and waves you down, mm -hmm. Finn... Mm -hmm. She has a stick figure on her hand. Hmm. Finn is just for a, for a moment, like... He, like, he just, for a split second, tenses. Like, squ like squints a little, but then just... There's put, put like uh, like turn turns to the side and just like that like like he, he looks like he's watching the dance floor but like rubs his chin for a second like just this five of, well there's couple of days scraggly well not scraggly like pretty looks pretty beard no like hmm eh. yeah so he just. Watch it, like, don't immediately do anything with that information. No, no, no. He 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 knows better than to just flip out in the middle of the thing. Sure. He's a be he's being a smart cookie. Mm. So the I I uh, the night basically like just drags on. Uh, yeah. She has something to drink. Then she returns to the dance floor with her partner. Invites mm. you out as well, um, Monica. Monica, what the fuck? Monica? Is, I'm, I'm really Monica getting my ass out. crossed. You are she invites really... herself out. Yeah, no, yeah. she invites you two out, Illy. Um, and the, like, just at some point or another, it gets late, and she uh, she excuses herself and and leaves. Well, in that case, perhaps I need to go use the bathroom and then follow her from a distance as a rat or something. Yeah. So she and Jill um, just walk down the street for a couple of blocks. Uh, eventually, um, stop by by a, like a walk up, um, say goodbye to each other. Jill vanishes up the stairs into the building, and Monica keeps walking, hands in in the pockets of her, uh, you know, her black weirdly cut jacket, um, whistling to herself as she cuts across the uh, the the um, sign lit streets. Of, of nighttime Halcyon. Yeah. I'm going to follow her. All right. So... Like a tiny scampering shadow. Yeah, absolutely. So the point oh, where God. everything seems normal, until she crosses a, until she crosses a road, she looks, looks around across the road, no one's coming, she cuts across to the opposite uh, sidewalk, and then... Uh, Vaults, uh, vaults a fence into a storage yard. Hmm. Well, 
I'm sure this this fence is is not uh, rat proof. It's not. As you scamper through the fence in the right spot, you emerge into the uh, into the construction yard, and you you have to peek around and and jump around and be a rat for a little while before you notice where she went, and you find her uh, walking through the like the stacks of of construction supplies uh, until she stops. Um, Greeted by a couple of silhouettes in in the darkness of the unlit uh, area. Do rats have good night vision? I don't know. Yes. Do rats yes, have good they night? They vision? have really good ears, and their eyes are like most critters that are night active. They reflect light better than others, so they do see better, but not amazing. But they, no, they hear really well, perfect. and they, they smell have... really well. Yeah. They don't have perfect night vision, obviously. Because I consider changing into something with better night vision than. I guess. Then you should be an owl. I guess I'm an owl. A tiny owl, a cute tiny owl. Tiny owl lands. Oh, like the like the tiny one Ron Weasley gets that little thing. <laughs> so this is one of the funnier points because now there is something at stake. Now I'm gonna make you roll to unleash your powers to shift no. and do this. Because now Here, you're no this, longer in the This comfort. owl. This owl. I'm gonna just link. There you go. Alright, so I want you to make a, a roll to unleash your powers to do this. Uh, to uh, overcome an obstacle. And the obstacle is that you will be noticed uh, spying on this conversation that's about to happen. Oh, the news! But I don't want to be noticed. I know. That's why we make the roll to see if you will be noticed. If you're doing good, you won't be. Yeah, because our rolls tonight have been so excellent. Come on, you can do it. If you can't, you can always run like hell. Yeah, I guess. Oh, I have another backup, I suppose, if needs be. Also, we've, we've not established where the others are in this picture, so it's not like you're necessarily here all by your lonesome. There could be help within, within oh, Shout's reach. Oh, Um, uh, yeah, I considered using, uh, Lightwing to help me, but that's usually quite obvious. He's showy and glowy. Exactly, so that's probably, I'll try rolling. You can do it. Damn it. Back. Mm. Mm. Uh, we could, um... <laughs> no, we can't. Well, I I can boost it. We aren't even there, so no. Well, maybe you are. This this would be a if you wanted to, you could pour whatever resources you have into this and appear from off frame to have followed and then, and now help to remain hidden. If that is a thing you want to do. But that's fine. Let's let's go with what we're looking at then. Aww. So you become a tiny owl and you flitter over and, and like listen in on the conversation, and you you see with your uh, acute night vision uh, the form of of uh, three women in total joining up with Monica. All of them seeming a little bit older than her. Uh, some of them a good deal older than her. Uh, dressed in various different types of fashion. Um, some dressed like, you know, like, uh, in air quotes, like, very normative. Uh, some of them dressed in kind of like, uh, uh, you know, like, um, Stutt uh, Stuttgart. Um, one of them dressed overtly like a sorceress, like, robes with, like, weird borders with symbols on them. The um, one I recognize? Uh... Is anyone here someone you recognize? Yes. Yes, it is. Let's say... Let's let's just go all out. Instead of being like, this is some nebulous somebody, uh, the, the person in the robe is totally Morrigan Le Fay. Uh, yeah. <sighs> recognize the, the black locks of hair rolling out under the hood. Uh, and they're having a conversation. Um... Say uh, Monica uh, starts out the the conversation uh, by saying, 
So, how did it go? Did everything go all right at Beresign? Yes, darling, yes. We entered the place just fine. And Graves and his lackeys won't be using that place for much more of that, of that insulting work. And what about that thing you talked about? Did you, did you find that? Yes, darling, yes, we did. We found it. We've also taken care of it. What do you mean? Don't worry about it. Suffice to say that that insult Graves rendered onto us will not be quickly forgotten, but at least now we can look for, at least now we can focus on retribution for what he did. So we're just going to continue as planned. Yes, that's the plan. We will continue attacking the targets we've been assigned. I'll meet you back in the coven before dawn. And they, um, the three, the, the, the two ladies step back. Um, one of them turns into a black cat. One of them turns into a bird and flies off. Um, Monica uh, herself seems to walk backwards and vanish into like a heavy shadow being cast by a crossbeam. And she just doesn't step out of it again. She just vanishes into that shadow. And Morrigan... Um, Turns around, pulls a key out of, uh, like, out of her, um, um, out from the folds of her robe, sticks it in the air and turns it, and you see, like, this, like, vibrant pinkish light start, like, just emerging as a door is being opened in the middle of empty space. And just as she does that, she turns around and looks up at you. It's like, I thought I sensed something. Pests, is it? And she turns and like closes the door again locks it puts the key back in the folds of her robe and turns towards you as as uh, magic starts flaring up her person and lighting the her her maniacally uh, contorted face and like this this gleeful evil face uh, under the, the the hood of the robe as she looks at you and run, that run, run. <laughs> that image is the the image we end on uh, as we we fold shut this issue of masks very fitting actually ooh, ooh. so let's talk experience i say experience let's talk end of session moves hey i don't have a problem with experience but i don't think it's going to do us any good in this system very true so let's do our end of session moves I I think Spyro got the experience that she's not good at picking up girls. That yeah. is yeah. maybe a thing. It's you know people are different. Diamond. Yes. What is your end of session move? Uh, she grew closer to the team, definitely. Right. Who made you feel welcome? Uh, well, Starlight did with that comforting move that was sorely needed. Totally. All right, give influence to Starlight. Already <coughs> done. All right, Starlight, change uh, Diamond's labels, please. Uh, again. Yes. Always. Um. Hmm. Repeat the period yes. break down. Okay. Period up and freak down. There we go. Yes. All right. You can cut a rug. Yay. There we go. Um. Next up, uh, Finn, would you do your end of session move, please? Uh, yeah, I think Finn grew closer to the team. Who made you feel closer? I think uh, Sparrow, they they kind of had a, well, comedic as it was, I think yes. they had, a, that was the first meaningful moment they had, like just the two of them. Yeah. That was actually kind of, kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, give influence to Sparrow. <laughs> Look at me throwing my influence at you, just... <laughs> just take it, damn it. I actually already have influence over you. 
Mm. All right. my label. The thing is, I think everyone in the group has influence over everyone else. Yes. I guess we'll find out. So, Doesn't what do you change his labels to? Which one was locked, just to make sure? Uh, savior is locked. Okay, well, I think, uh, you know, having friend, uh, having fun with your friends in a bar, I think I would up mundane for that. Makes uh, sense to me. I guess I would take down Freak, then? Yep. And kind of a, a, a grounded moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, did you... Um, um... Finn, is there anything else I'll, you need to... What, what, will, what will you take for this? Oh, my potential. All right, your mark potential. Um, we don't do for Nightshade because Thalmit couldn't join us for this session, but Starlight, what will be your end of session move? Uh, she grew closer. All right. Who made you feel close? It's starting to... Be like an old record with a big scratch in it. Diamond. <laughs> cool. All right, so give influence to Diamond. She already has influence. Mm, yes. Diamond, what will you change? And I'm just opening up Starlight's character sheet to take a look. And she is going to move her... Um... She's going to move her mundane up because the whole comfort and support thing is something she's been doing several times with Diamond now, and it's appreciated. So Mundane goes up, and Freak goes down. No! Yes. <laughs> All right. White Sparrow. Yep. What's your end-of-session move? I think I grew into myself. All right. And how do you feel? How do you see yourself? Uh, she definitely re-established the, well, the martyrdom that she's currently running. Um, the whole, as long as I can keep everyone else safe and happy, it doesn't matter that I suffer. Yeah. Kind of self-image. All right. Is what she grew into. Excellent. So, um... What labels will you change? For this, I think I'll... Uh, so, I think it was Joan who mentioned when I said I had a low freak, that yeah, you don't feel that alone. I think I will put freak up to reflect that she kind of feels more alone now. Okay. You think and, you're alone now? Well, as I talked with Mind's Eye about, yeah. Now, now I'm imagining... Um... The most inappropriate thing. I'm I'm imagining um, White Sparrow and and Black Raven uh, to the tunes of I think we're alone now by uh, Birthday Massacre, mm. which is just just the worst thing I can imagine. And then I'll shift mundane down. All right, cool. Do I get anything from that except for that? Oh uh, no, you get to adjust your labels. That's true. Uh, for my, uh, I earned a move throughout the session I took. Uh, I don't care what you think from the delinquent. Oh, cool. Tell me about that. It gives me plus two to um, reject uh, other people's influence. Yes, that's the one. Right, you so took which one? Uh, I don't care what you think. Oh, that's uh, the, what's it called? From the... Delinquent. Uh... Yeah. What? It's, a, it's from the delinquent playbook. Whenever you yeah, I have one place, from have the place. reformed playbook. Yeah, you also have. Um... Oh yeah, that's the one you have. You have the one where you can like wreck shit to to drop conditions. Yeah. That's so good. Okay, um, and uh, then uh, White Sparrow, did you make any progress in terms of your uh, in terms of your Doom track? Mm, no. All right. So, I mean, unless you disagree. No, Mark, your Doom track, it's fine. I agree with your assessment. Yeah. What's your Doom track looking like there, friend? I have one, uh, and I still need to unlock two more Doom signs, and then my Doom will come. So for now, it's stable. Good. Especially since I unlocked uh, more potential this session. Man, we rolled poorly. Yeah. 
that's the thing that happened. Yeah. But luckily for you, you you wound up in a. Oh, I, I, I was about to say you wound up in an okay situation, but particularly your situation is kind of awful right now. Like mm-hmm. really genuinely bad. So yeah, we'll we'll see about that. I I am having you know preliminary plans for how to work with that. All right. Well, uh, we will see how exactly you get out of this particular headache next time. And uh, for you guys, of course, you guys and girls, thank you so much for playing with me. Uh, this was fun as always. Good to be back. Uh, hope you had fun. Can you? Yes. Definitely. Shouldn't we make a cover and find a title? Uh, yeah, I think we should do that. I think, I think that's a good idea. What should be the cover and the title of today's issue? I think it would be too fucking good to not have this be a comedy cover with uh, with uh, the llama kiss. Ha. Either that or just and it should be called. Shade. And then it sh- the the issue should be called uh, strange attractions. <laughs> That's my suggestion, anyway. Yeah, we don't get to see that the llama has a different different body. We just see. Two hands on each side and Vigil kissing it. Yes. <laughs> yep. That's and that's strange the attractions. One. That's the and everyone cover. is just gonna what the fuck? What am I reading? What's this issue? Oh, oh, oh! And he still has that flower crown on his head. <laughs> but of course. And painted face. <laughs> and a painted face. So, um, okay, that's that's the that's the issue's cover <laughs> and the issue's title. Excellent. Yep. Uh, is there anything else that I've forgotten since we're doing this again? Um, don't think so. No, I, think I don't think so. Either. Well, in I that case, um, I guess I said thank you guys for, of course, coming here, being awesome players. Yay! And thank Yay. you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to Halcyon City Defenders on Mask uh, on Charisma to AC. You know, we're playing Masks. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. Uh, it is always awesome to see your many and interesting comments it is always nice to see your delightful thumbs up and the many views that you're giving us it's so cool that we can contribute to you having a good time in the same way we're having a good time here so thank you so very much once more for watching us on charisma to ac and we'll be back in the future with even more masks but until then bye bye toodle pip toodle pip indeed bye, bye.